Oh, um, recently, uh, a few days ago, you recorded, you shot a video for Long Way Down. How did it go? Um, yeah, really well. Uh, when will it be released? <laughs> and hopefully very soon. Hopefully, actually, you know, when you shoot a video, we've only shot one before. Uh, it took ages, you know, getting it together. But this guy who shot it, um, his name's George Clark. He's an independent filmmaker here. He's doing very well. Um, he seems he he, film, he actually filmed with day, today, and said we should have a first draft, a first look at it, you know, over the weekend. And I was like, wow, that's that's nuts, you know. Usually it takes forever, but uh, went down to um, is a Titanic where the Titanic was built in Belfast. Is a it's it's got a lot of like film studios and stuff down there, and big kind of hangars and things like you know. And it has these big the big cranes and in Belfast are these. Harland and Wolf cranes are like a real um, iconic landmark of Belfast. I um, went down and we shot, we shot one part of the video outside with the cranes in the background, and it, like it looks really cool from what we from what we have seen, you know. And then we went into the it's like a big it's like it's like a big aircraft hangar type thing. It's a big, big dramatic type space, and uh, you know we shot we shot in there and. George has a few ideas, and he kept saying well, we're going to do things in post and stuff. So we've kind of <clears throat> we've done it's a performance video, like it's it's just basically us playing. But they want to do a few things, a few filters and stuff like that. So we had a good we had a good time doing it. Like you know, it was good it was good fun doing it. We hadn't done a video like seven years, like so it was uh, yeah, it was, it was good. It was really enjoyable. So hopefully we'll see it. Um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll have it ready and everybody you know look at it and okay it and then our, our PR guy is going to um, organise a, a launch and we'll be getting on to a few you know, for the UK channels like um, like Scuzz and I don't know about the Crown channel if they'll take it because they, again they ask for money for to play your videos so we'll probably hopefully get it on Scuzz and a few, a few other places here like so um yeah, two or, two or three weeks, hopefully, we'll have it out. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, you have uh, played an unplugged show at Limelight in Belfast. Uh -huh. How was the experience of playing in such a, in such a slow pace, let's say? Yeah, um, well, we don't slow down much. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, it was really good. It was really, really good. Um, as a promoter um, friend, uh, James Loveday runs the busy runs the Belfast metal scene. There's a, a weekly showcase of two bands um, every Saturday, and has been for like thirteen years. That's that's where that's where the bands play now. Like you know, it's the outlet in Belfast. Um, and he had he had been approached by um, the BBC to do like it's in, in Belfast every. Every autumn there's a, a music week and they have a lot of different events. Um, it been approached to get um, like rock and metal bands to do acoustic sets, like a wired and wired and inspired. It was supposed to be basically to do a heavy set and do an unplugged set and the radio was down and all that sort of stuff. So we were kind of, you know, like we're a pretty heavy band. Um, he had asked us what we would do it, but because our songs have a lot of melody in it, um, I thought, yeah, we'll, we'll give it a stab. And we've done 15 minutes, or we're supposed to do 15 minutes, but it turned into like half an hour. And we kind of liked it, and people people really seemed to, you know, seemed to really like what, what it was about. So we went and <coughs> changed the songs over. Um, we got a few more songs in there. I've done, done a couple of gigs acoustically, and it seems to work pretty well. Um, the festivals seem to be picking up on it. With, we're playing at like a festival in Scotland. Um, and they've asked us to do the acoustic set. Um, we're playing a festival in Ireland in August, and they've asked us to do both sets as well. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of people seem to like it. Like seems to be working for us, and like we like playing it. It's it's definitely different. You know, it's enjoyable. Well, actually, it's kind of weird. I didn't think I was going to like playing it, but it was kind of it was kind of cool. Like, uh, yeah, it's, it's nice to be able to do both just for a change, just walk up with a guitar and walk off again without having to carry all that crap out. Because <laughs> um, I read your 
art rock fans. I mean, I read that you like that you like Skid Row. You are fans yeah. of Skid Row. Oh yeah, great uh, um, Have no, you they... ever considered doing a cover song, a cover of of any of their songs? Of Skid Row, yeah, yeah, whole album. I love Skid Row. <laughs> I play everything. Um, yeah, no, basically, like myself and the, the singer, uh, sort of grew up with you know, the big four: Metallica and Slayer, Anthrax, Megadeth, and we we're the kind of more thrash heads of the band. Like you know, that's where the the real heavy stuff comes from. Like you know, but our drummer, like he idolizes uh, Chad Smith out of the, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and he kind of grew up with Smith and. You know, all that sort of rock stuff, like, uh, our bass players back into rock as well. It just so happens we play, you know, heavier music, but, I mean, there's a strong rock element. I mean, our, basically, Davey, our drummer, he, he's basically a rock rock drummer who plays, you know, rock band, but his drums, his drums enable us to do a lot of shit that, that, you know, if you're stuck and doing the double kickers all the time, and if he had, a like, a metal head drummer on him, he, he would, we just wouldn't be able to do the stuff that we do. And that's what makes, I think that's, realistically, I think that's what makes the band. With us, our singer, Mauro, he always comes up with these really weird time changes and real and real mad sort of shit that I'd never think of it, you know, that type of thing. And Davey's able to drum that because of his, his, his rock background and the Chili Peppers background. You know, he, can, he, can, he can adapt very quick. And that's what makes the, the writing process pretty cool because you never really know where it's going to go, you know, and... We're not afraid to, to use melody in the songs. It doesn't have to be cave in your head in all the time, but you know, we will keep it heavy. So, um, yeah, to answer your question, I'd cover any Skid Row song. Uh, we have done, we've covered Machine Head and covered Prong, um, Faith No More, a few bands like that. You know, we don't really, we're never really big on covers. We like just keeping it ourselves, but sometimes, like, you know, we'll just, we'll maybe learn a couple if we're going on tour to the UK. Or you know, over to Germany or something, we'll learn something, you know, to get the crowd going a bit. <laughs> Just sort of have to listen to our shit all the time, but you know, um, we could very easily play a skid row cover. I could, I don't know how our singer would feel about singing Sebastian Bach stuff, but you know, I'd be happy to do that. Way. <laughs> <laughs> so you just mentioned Slayer. Um, yeah. As the death of Jeff Anneman, uh since you're a guitarist, um, affected you somehow? I mean, has he had any impact on your... Um, yeah. Um, on your s guitar sound? Uh, yeah, you no, know, absolutely. Um, it sucks. It's really bad. This is really bad news, you know. It's, you know, it's, it's, one, of the, it's one of the... It's the first guy out of the, you know, the big four, you know, the guys we grew up with, you know. It's not somebody like, you know... From a band of Black Sabbath or Iron, you know, early Iron Maiden or something. This is this is a guy who we grew up listening to day in day out. Like you know, wrote some of the best songs ever written metal. Like you know, uh, you know, it's not, it's our guy. Like you know, it's this guy that we from set or what, thirteen, twelve years old getting into metal. That's you know, it was Slayer, Metallica, Anthrax, uh, Magnet. That was the that's the thing that sucked us in. You know. And, He's only what like, ten years older than what we are, like twelve years or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, our, it's a bit massive influence on our sound anyway. Um, our singer Morrow, that's like Slayer's his, that's his fear of band, you know, a, a big, uh, big influence. And yeah, we just got it. It was really, really sad to hear he passed away. And funny, like <clears throat> he was writing, our singer we're writing at the minute for Volume Two, and um, with a couple of riffs that we're going to. There's one that's a real Slayer type riff, and um, we're going to keep it, you know, kind of just tribute. maybe 10 seconds or so. It's good, like it'll just be pure Slayer, but we're going to keep it that way. You know, we're not going to change it. It's just a wee, you know, we nod to Slayer, like, you know, because definitely in the next album, you'll definitely hear we, you'll just go, ah, that's Slayer, you know. So, yeah, we're, like, we're just got it, like I said, one of our guys, like, you know. Okay. As Irishmen, you are supposed to enjoy drinking quite a lot. Uh, do you yeah. believe in so the yeah. sex, drugs, and rock and roll motto? Um. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> not, yeah. <laughs> um. It's a bit uh, as far as the drugs go. Like you know, we're not. 
too bothered about shit. Um, it's never really good news, like you know. Um, in the band, like it was a lot of like, people like a drink. Don't get me wrong, like there's a few people in the band like drinking more than others. I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Like, uh, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, if you're going, it's you gotta have fun with it. Like you know, you gotta, you gotta get down and rock. You know. Uh, yeah, everything else apart from the apart from the drugs, not too, not too interested in that shit. Like you know, kind of been there and tried that, and it doesn't really work for us. The, the drink and the alcohol and anything else, that's fine. Like you know. Okay. Uh, at what point in your life did you realize uh, music was in your veins? Um. Yeah, I mean it's all. Fuck, uh, excuse me. It's kind of always been there, you know. Uh, it's kind of hard not to. I can't even remember when it would get, like I say, getting into metal at the start with Slayer and Anthrax, you know. I kind of knew anyway at the start that I'm going to, this is going to be my music. Like, you know, there's a lot of friends I grew up with. They still like their, their music, but they're, you know, they're just doing the nine to five jobs or, you know, married out in the country or whatever. Like, you know, we're. It's a certain type of guy, or certain type of guys that are still playing, still you know, still in bands, still turns, still writing, still you know, going to practice, still doing all that stuff, like you know. So, I, well, I personally just knew at the well, just thirteen, twelve, just when I started listening, like uh, I'm, I'm in this for the for the long haul, like, you know. And it's funny, our producer Frankie had just said this one day, like when we we're in recording, he just said he's he just didn't even have a choice. He says he. You have no choice. You just have to be musicians. Like you know, you might think you you can walk away from this, but he just laughed at us and went like, you know, you spies don't even use our victims. You just don't have a choice. <laughs> and that's pretty. That's pretty true. Like that's that's the way I feel about it. You know. Okay. What uh, What can you tell us about the metal scene in Ireland? Apart um, from Primordial, um, and a few others. Which I can't remember right now. Uh, yeah, it's, we it's don't very, seem to hear m uh, about. It's really weird. It's ridiculous. Like it's it's so self-contained. Um, there's so many bands over here. There's so many brilliant bands. It's anytime anybody comes here from a, a different country to play, they just can't believe the level of the bands that's over here. Um, and nobody knows anything about it because, like the UK press, you get nothing at all from them. You know. And by not being in the UK press, it's not really filtering out into France or Europe or Spain. You know, the scene over here is fantastic. Fantastic, it blew you away. You know, I mean, for like Terrorizer done a scene report, or like a magazine. What the like one of the times they actually did write about us? They done a, like a scene report for um, you know, like uh, Glasgow and Manchester and Edinburgh and stuff like that. And most of the, most of those reports were like five, six, seven bands. When they done Belfast, it was like thirty-two bands, and they left out half of the bands as well. Like it's the scene of it. It's just there's just so many bands. I think it's kind of because nobody comes here as much. You know, a lot of the big bands will will miss out Ireland or miss out Northern Ireland on their on their tours, and there's not really anything else to do here apart from everybody's in a band. I mean, everybody I know is in a band. It's <laughs> and a good band too. Like I mean, there's a lot of good, a lot of real solid. You know. It's like playing with bands over here has really prepared us for playing with bands anywhere in England or Scotland or, you know, Europe or anything like that, you know, because we're kind of really proud of where we come from here because there's, there's so many, like there's so many good bands because there's nothing really else to do here, like, like you're saying. Um, the scene over here is right. I just wish a couple of bands would, you know, would break or would get a wee bit more light on us over here. Like, you know, it's, uh, the scene is great here. It's, it just takes you to actually come here and, um, People usually are, you know, genuinely surprised, unpleasantly surprised, and they go away thinking, oh, you know, it's just rocks. It's just a pity nobody else knew about it, like you know. So, and that's north and south. It's just there's a lot of good bands here, like you know. And uh, are you familiar with the Portuguese metal scene? Do Not you? really, to be honest. Not <laughs> at all. Like, well, it's hopefully it'll change, like, because I wouldn't mind. I'll just put this out there. If there's any Portuguese bands that are sort of into the same sort of stuff that we're doing. And I didn't want to get in touch, uh, do some, you know, some gate trading. We're totally up for that. I mean, we have had bands from here go over to Portugal. Um, a band called Honey for Christ went over and played a few shows in Portugal. Um, 
I think Storm Zone were supposed to play with Sebastian back over there, but I think that fell through. But there's there's been a wee we've heard a wee bit about Portugal, you know, but I'd like I say I'll just put this out there right there. If anybody wants to get in touch, I don't know, like a decent metal band and wants to play Ireland on is willing to do a trade, um we we'd definitely be up for that or promoters or anything. Just get in touch, like you know, we're we're up for doing it. I hope some uh, of the bands will get in touch with you, really. Yeah, there's always rain over here. We'd like to go and play somewhere warm for a change. <laughs> it's always like, pissing down, like, you know, so there's plenty of pubs over here being inside, plenty of beer. If you can get outside and play somewhere with a bit of sun, that's sweet. You know? Do you have any advice for the bands that are starting out? Um, the main thing is, honestly, is just to stay away from, or just really think about you know, signing anything, any of the labels. A lot of the, a lot of the labels, you know, they kind of prey on on young bands. You know, they get them in and they get the money out of them. You know, like these DIY deals. You know, I will run you like a professional band, but you have to give us money, and you know, it just sucks. Unless there's money up front, just stay away from it. Um, because I know a lot of bands over here. You know, have had I've been able to advise a few bands to not get into deals, and it's really worked out. You know, it's just not to not to give money away to record labels. Um, you know, or people that'll say they'll do stuff for you without without doing your research, like without checking these guys out, because you know, it, you can. I mean, a thousand pound to these guys is nothing, but to a band that's hard working, you know, and a young band like a thousand pounds is a lot of money. Like, you know, it's it's not stuff you just want to. Be, you know, um, just giving away for nothing is it? Just do the research, like you know, and, and you know, obviously have your sound, get your get your demos, present your band, you know, professionally. But the main thing is to do not sign to the first people that uh, pay any attention, because that's basically what we did. You know, we were like, oh, we'll sign to this label over in England, and they're telling us they love us and all that sort of stuff. And then you know, a week later, oh, we need a thousand pounds, we need. You know, that type of thing. And because we were one of the first bands to do the DIY deals over here, um, we kind of, you know, we kind of learned the hard way of what not to do. So, you know, just just do your research. Like, that's the, that's the main thing I'd say, like, you know. Okay. So, can you please share a final message with um, the viewers? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, first of all, thanks for listening to me talking, you know, shit for the last day. Uh, half hour or whatever but um you know just check the check the album out we have a few other albums as well um you know just around facebook just send us on facebook or itunes you know hopefully would love to get over to portugal and play like i said I'm just putting it out there for any of the bands out there that, you know want to do a trade and on a good level on you know are serious about it get in touch with us please get in touch um you know we'll, we'll see if we can set something up because this is pretty much what happened with the German band. Like on the first time we went to Germany, we just it was through MySpace at the time, and we just emailed. We just got an email saying like, you know, really like your band. And I was like, well, I really like you guys. Do you want to play in in Belfast? And they got back and said, yep, you know, we'll do this. And like I'm still friends with those guys now, and that that was like nine years ago. And we're actually bringing the guys over from Germany in, you know, in uh, November, I think. So, and that just came from like something like this, some very, like a social media. So, I'll just pull it out there if any, any of the Portuguese bands, or if you know any Portuguese bands yourself that, you know, that would be interested in this, just get in touch. Um, hopefully, we'll get out there and um, bang some skulls, like, you know. Okay. Thanks. We hope to see you here uh, in Portugal as well. And uh, I wish you the best. Uh, I wish oh. the best for you and for Sinisense. All right, thanks very much for having us. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye.